It's a me. Oh, that uh, you know that hot chip challenge that we did, dude. Those are everywhere now. Like the chips themselves. The like, the single ones. The single ones. I like the uh, AM like the Rotten Robbie down the street from my house has a whole display. Like literally Ooh. a whole display. I'm like, who the hell is coming in here and buying one of these? Besides, who in here is coming in and buying fifty of these? <laughs> we should do that again, huh? <laughs> they haven't sold one. Uh, I mean, no, no one's, no one's like, I'm hungry. <laughs> if you do it again, I'll do it with you guys this time. I can't, Dan won't do I it. Can't do it. Bust out. I'll do anything. I'll do any type of. Oh food. yeah, you didn't even do it though. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, you can't do it. I know you can't do it. No, I, I, I'm not. Especially if you don't normally eat spicy food. Like, then I don't. I ain't got the stones. And yeah. I can't do it. Yeah. But I'll do like any <clears> other <throat> stuff that's like not not fish related. Uh, I was just gonna be like sashimi, dude. All right. Sashimi uh, challenge. You guys, do you think we're ready? Yep. What is going down, everyone? It's time for the hype. Episode number 157. Mojobreak.com is the website. Make sure you're subscribed here on Twitter and our Mojo Break Media, where you can find all of our content. We just broke down the MLB playoffs on the Dugout Show, so watch that on Mojo Break Media. But for today's show, we got a lot of exciting things to talk about. We're going to have a debate. PSA versus BGS. So we're going to get down on that one. Uh, we're also going to talk a little Pokemon, which we very little, low, know barely anything about it. But we're going to talk about it because it is very, very hot at the moment. And we're also going to break down some bad signatures. Dan, C-Rad, whoever wants to say what's up, how's it going? <laughs> like how I set you guys up on that one. Oh, huh? Yeah, I mean, that will never work. Yeah. You, you can't just say. Going at the same time. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, hey, Dan, C-Rad, how you guys doing? Talk at the same time. Double down. Go, well, what's, what's up? Tell me what's <laughs> up. Um, yeah, I'm good, man. I just uh, just woke up today and figured I'd put on a sports coat, dress shirt, and come to work and uh, open up some cards. Very professional, man. Like, uh, well, that's, that's <clears throat> what I am, and that's what I do. I do for the people. Sell me something. I, I did. Tell me that Kavita sparkling sparkling. It's drink all right gone. Now. It was so good. I drank it already. Oh, well, that, I mean, yeah. it's very difficult. To, I mean, not difficult to sell it, but definitely difficult not to just chug it all down. It's so mm. good. Mm, okay, well. Then and it brought to you by Kavita oh, right, probiotic right. sparkling. I mean, please hit us up. I mean, I love this so much, and I love. We were just talking about sponsorships. Like, we need drink sponsorships. So, like, the fine people at Kavita, come come at me. And, and Key for culture, dude. Yeah, it's Keeper. great. It's great. See, Rad, what's up, dude? What's <laughs> up, everybody? And I'd like to say, I'd like to mention Pokemon has always been hot. It has. It has. It's <clears> just <throat> now it's on the, it's, it's getting crazy popular. Um, but speaking of somebody that maybe doesn't need a sponsorship, I want to talk a little Alvin Kamara. Why do you ask? Well, for one, he had an amazing game over the weekend. Um, and for two, I don't know who's signing his autographs. So we're going to look at a rookie autograph in 2017 compared to a very, very recent sizable signature black autograph. I don't think Alvin Kamara is signing his cards any longer. You can also look at some of his latest Donruss cards. What is going on with Alvin Kamara's signature? Is it him? Is he shorthanding it? Is he too popular now to do it the old way? What do you guys think? Dude, his and, and this is this is funny because like his old autograph is so unique that it it you'll never forget it. It mm -hmm. has it has a star. So like it always would stand out when you get a an Alvin Kamara rookie auto in 2017. This is breaking news, Doug. I did not I did not know Breaking here. That breaking here. Like, look at you. Look at you going out and putting in the work. I should be wearing the sports coat, you know? You should. You should. You could actually wear mine, but it would be like that scene Chris Farley, in, yes. in Tommy Boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not I mean, quite that large, yeah. A couple more pizzas, maybe, but yeah. I, I bet you'd break this. I'd probably break that one. <laughs> I bet maybe. you'd rip it right in half. Let's try it. No. Okay. Well, let's not. Um, I got this one tailored, actually. So let's. let's yeah, I'm going to get retailored after that. What do you think, C Red? <laughs> 
Alvin I, Kamara. <clears throat> that's uh, surprising to me too because I've I've actually have not seen or pulled a Alvin Kamara in 2020. So just seeing this on the screen is pretty jarring. Just like like you were saying, like you know it, his his was so unique back in 2017. Like Dan was saying with the star that that do that first one compared to the 2017. That's like what is going now, on here? No, I think you look at the next one, just the straight AK. Like the pen strokes are not even the same. Like yeah, as, as like. The, the star like like that the star that he used to do I think it's the it's the a right mm -hmm. like but he just puts a star in it you actually look at the pen strokes on the star and then you look at the a on the uh, the next slide and it's not even close yeah I mean I'm I, not saying he didn't I, no sign I mean them, I don't but... I don't I don't know I don't I don't know but we are again in covid times so there's like I don't know how manufacturers are going to be obtaining these autographs and it is a sticker auto and they definitely are not going to have a chance to go to Alvin Kamara's house and sit down and have him sign autographs. It's just not, not feasible at the moment now. So like, unfortunately, I don't know if any of these autographs, they have an affidavit that they send with it. Right. I was going to say, that. um, but they're, probably not being seen in person as they would in previous years yeah i mean how how very easy is it for alvin kamara to be like hey maybe, maybe he got this in april who knows maybe he got it you know in the midst of the pandy and he basically was like you know what i gotta work out i gotta train i'm not getting training camp so he's like hey um mr assistant or hey son or cousin or somebody can you just get, you know, fulfill those commitments I have with Benini America for me? It was also right around the same time. Probably be he very was, easy uh, to do that. He had a little contract dispute with the Saints during yeah. the offseason, and he was uh, holding out a training camp, and he wanted to get that extension. He got it now, so I wonder if, like, if there's any more autos if you go, go back to the star. Maybe. Well, maybe that's extra. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he's like, you know what? For the money you're paying me, you're getting the AK. Yeah, I mean, I don't you know. You pay me double, I'm going to go give you the star. I don't know. I know very little. But if I was to sit down and look at all three of these different autographs, it would be a red flag. <laughs> I'd, I'd be like, I'm concerned. Yeah. What about, what about you guys? Is it concerned or just like shorthand? It's all good. Just a way, way of the way we do it now. I mean, this one, the, the black one, doesn't look as bad maybe because he kind of screwed it up but the other ones literally look like it was just like mm, i'm gonna put an a i'm gonna put a k i'm gonna put an a i'm gonna put a but, but and they almost you, look different like it's somebody trying to but do you do you think and we've already talked about this a manufacturer going back and saying hey we suspect that this may have not been you who signed these manufacturers hands Can't. are kind of tied yeah because yeah, at that point at that week. point you are accusing somebody of lying when you really don't know but i think you have to take a step back get those autographs back and look at them and go we can't put our name and associate our name and saying that we guarantee these autos to be legit but you can't it's almost like it's not a scenario where it's a teacher saying a student cheated you can't you just can't do that okay, with a high okay. profile Hypoth athlete. hypothetically doug i'm putting you you are in charge of a manufacturer you have been in the past i mean you had doug's duels that came out a couple years ago yeah so like very you, strict you, quality control you've worn that hat you've done this so let's say you send out some some stickers to get signed by an athlete that you've had on card on on card autos with and they come back and they look like this do you go well doug's duels series 16 is coming out i just gotta throw it out there or do you go I, I'm going to hold these back and do a little bit more due diligence and research to see if maybe contact them and be like, hey, did you change your auto? Maybe, maybe friendly have a conversation. But once again, any card company is kind of low on the totem pole, not a priority, has no pull. Um, and, and it's a situation where this is a third year Alvin Kamara card where it's not the draw of the product. 
right? So everybody's chasing Burrow and Tua, and this is a nice addition, right? And, and, and Panini doesn't have any time to maybe go back and say, can we get the other auto? And then he's going to be like, well, I fulfilled my obligation. They have an affidavit. That's all they can do. It's almost like a court document. Even if somebody you think is lying, if the affidavit says, I'm not lying, what can you do? You but, can't do but anything. But the other issue is, and again, speculating on my end, to get him to sign after his rookie year, unless it's a contract that they already had worked in, maybe it was a multi-year contract deal, um, they probably paid more money for the more recent autos yes. than they paid for the 2017 autos. Well, you could see so it. You could see I, it in I the numbering put, here. If I put out a a lot of money to get these 2020 autographs as a manufacturer, I think. I would have to have a friendly conversation and say, hey, we all sat back and looked at your seven, your 2017 auto and your 20. And this conversation may be happening right now. Now, if it's happening right now, I don't think they have no they have no time dude. they're putting Zenith out. I mean, they're putting I mean, like, it's, yeah, but do you have no you, time to do you stop? Wanna, do you want to risk the backlash of putting in? Unauthorized. He autograph? authorized that it was his signature, though. So unless you're like you did not sign this and he's like yes i did what grounds do they have to stand on they have no grounds to stand on you got, i get the optics yeah well, i mean you got you got the fact that I, I again speculating but if i was to guess i would say these are probably not the same person i would too and, and you and you're right what i was going to make the point about is the money obviously it costs more because if you look at the black version there's five of them if you look at these two donruss versions there's a number to 25 and there's a number to 15 so Obviously, there's probably only like yeah. 20 to so, 20 or something. So, yeah, I mean. He signed maybe like 200. There may, there may have been a contract that was negotiated in the offseason for, you know, <clears throat> 150, 200 sticker autos right. that they're going to basically space out. And he probably got as much money for those 200 autos as he did for the, again, hypothetically throwing numbers out there, 20,000 autos he may have signed in 2017. Now, would this get a C-Rad 6.5, the autograph? The autograph? Yeah. Uh, probably not the autograph because you know Kamara, he's, he's cool, but he's not that he's not like super cool on my list. So, so he's a good ball. Like a, he's a good ball four, player, like a four. Five. Yeah, because I, I don't grade. I don't like. I don't care about the autos either. Do you not? Do you not? So you don't care about the autos. You don't care about the condition, and you don't care about like nothing about the, the player. Condition. The player matters. The player matters. The player so matters. the player is basically where the grading really comes in. Yes, exactly. The condition doesn't how, how matter. Cool the, the autograph. Too. How cool the car, and that's design based, wise. That's based solely on your my, opinion. Yeah, my okay. my yeah. opinion of aesthetic. Yeah, so like, yeah, it, yeah. if I'm all, hey, this is a really cool card, Conrad, and you're like, yeah, I don't like it. That's like two point three. It, it might not get a six five. It might get two point three. <laughs> Do yeah. you is is it a six five or a nothing? I'll, I'll tell you this: if it's a Giants, if it's a, so a San Francisco Giants or a San Francisco 49ers card, it, it might not go past a two. So when people <laughs> submit, so when people submit, I I'm I'm curious because we just had a debate about grading, and uh, we'll you know, a little segue into that soon, but I want to talk about the other grading company out there. C rad 6.5, um, mm -hmm. running up the list here. Mm -hmm. And I want to know if somebody sends a card and it's not a 6.5, mm -hmm. do they just get it sent back to them? You just take their money and then send it back and say, Hey, didn't read. No, did, I'm going to give them a grade. Oh, I, cause I thought maybe it might be, this didn't get it's six six point five or nothing. Like it didn't reach a cut. It's not cool. Oh enough. no no! no. I'll Here's give your you card a, back, and then you, you basically grade, yeah. then you basically take their money. No, I, I, like, I give everybody a grade. Give everybody a grade. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, what's a what's the lowest grade you can give? Is it a point one? Um, uh, like point five, point four. Point four. Yeah. Point four. Do you do like point four? Do you do even do fractional on top of that? Like point four two five. Very rarely. Okay, because I'm <laughs> I'm just like. So you could have like a thousand different grades there. I mean, yeah. so so six, but six five is like essentially like get, a black label, yeah, or like a the coolest, like a gem the coolest card in the world. And, and you get those out on a regular basis. Like, is it? Would you say three percent of submissions get a six point five, or ten percent, or one percent? As Less long, than one percent. I, I tell you this: as long as it says Oakland on the card, you might have a good chance of getting a six point six point five, baby. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Well, let, let's talk about a practice coming out on Friday. Football. There may be an Alvin Kamara on there. I don't know, but uh, Origins. Some may call it Inception still, but Origins is coming out on Friday, and you are looking at three hits per box. Um, solely based on the rookie premier list. So if you're buying teams and PYTs and things like that, 
I would probably stay away from teams like the Saints that may not have a rookie premier guy um, because typically these are only rookie premier autos. I know we had a COVID rookie premier, but I would look at that. Um, But it is known for its its, its on-card autographs, as you can see with the uh, Joe Burrow uh, mock-up here. You have patch autographs, and um, it's always been one of those staples to football. My question to you guys, both you guys and people in the chat, we're in a different era now. We're in an era of parallels. Does Origins still do well? Does it still become sought after in the era of parallels? And somebody can take whoever wants to take that one. Man, you're. Uh, I'll, I'll. I'll. I'll take it. Just yeah. Maybe you should like nudge me or something. Okay. Maybe like here yeah. you go, man. You can. You just, I mean, whoever's hungry. Yeah. I'm going hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Origins, on-card autos, parallels, parallels you're talking. You know what Origins doesn't have? Shininess, and you're probably talking about That's what I'm you're, saying. You're probably just saying that. Is it out of the realm for there to be an Origins prism? Like, the, 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 like what, if, what if they actually ooh. started inserting Origin cards, prism technology, non-autos, as case sits inside the case? Oh. I just I couldn't even comprehend that. I think my... Like, it... We just got done doing a debate. I get it. Like, there's a lot of information spewing out of my mouth and going into your brain. So it's it's hard to keep like up. Like uh, Orig- Origins Optic? Or I'm saying only one. It can be a, it. It, it can be a prism preview. But they're not doing that, though, that we know. But of. Origin Design with prism you you can never do too much shiny. We've learned this. Yeah, we thought there was. But no, they're never, never, never too much shiny. You can never but have too much shiny. It, it, we've already talked about this. The basketball collectors have basically kind of taken over the football collectors, and we're not looking for the autos. That's old school. We're looking for the parallels. We're looking for the silvers. We're looking for the rookies. I mean, people are going after Donruss. We're selling Donruss football personal boxes like crazy because people want the – like rookie cards, the true rookie cards of Joe Burrow and Herbert. And I don't know if Origins Origins is going to be hot because it is on card. It's the first true on card. Don't know if the players are going to be in their actual jersey, if they're going to Photoshop the jerseys, or is it going to be the double zero? They didn't have a photo shoot. So I don't know what to expect. I know what we're looking at right now is just the mock-ups. Yeah, I'm looking through the uh, checklist. It is available on Panini's website as well. Um, it, it doesn't look like it does look like they have shields. Uh, I don't see a whole lot of veteran other than maybe base cards um, that do do have parallels of that. You know, you can see that they have uh, Mahomes, Brady, all that stuff. So I mean, that may those may be valuable at some point. Low numbered origins, Brady, Mahomes, things like that. So. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be an interesting release to see how collectors take it because it is it was allocated for us. We got less than we wanted. Um, you can see the retail price is higher than it's been. Um, but once again, it's not a parallel. So C Red, I mean, what do you think? Origins is it is it just football collectors are gonna come to it anyway? <clears throat> Man, if we were talking about this back in July, like when Origins Origins usually generally comes out what in August. So if we were talking about this in July August. I would say the hype for Origins would be the same as it's always been, but as we've seen, like the the market changes so fast every single month. So um, I'm gonna say people are still excited because you know, like you said, it's the first on card with like the, the like the with their full uniform on, right? The first on card because the pen pals technically are on card with their uniforms, but they're like bu- like neck, like kind of like shoulder neck up, mm-hmm. right? It's not the full photo of them, so. Origins generally is that first on card with their full jersey, so that's what made it so popular with collectors because it was an early chance of getting these on card autos of them. But now we're we're we're, we're releasing in October now. So yeah, you know I, I mean, I, so yep. I, I think I think the key with Origins has always been that it is like you're saying an early release. Um, it's one of those releases that does really well for like a week. Yeah, maybe two weeks, and then. It either it, it, it either, it either like dries up or another product comes yeah. out. I think Origins is one of those products that is falling down on the pecking order yeah. every year. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see products like Phoenix kind of overtake. Yeah. Because, again, you got that shiny you aspect got shiny, yeah. of, of Phoenix. And, and 
just just seeing the preview here that Doug's scrolling through. I mean, it looks as nice as it always does. I yep. mean, Inception has always been a great design, and you know, Panini borrowing it for for Origins. <laughs> you know what that I mean? Was, that was sneaky right there. <laughs> that was sneaky. I mean, I, I mean, I don't I don't know if everybody was sitting because you gotta you gotta remember, we're we're dealing with people who may have not been in the industry yeah. or the hobby that long but they and, still see obsession every year because of baseball they do they do but in i think starting in and correct me if i'm wrong 2012 inception football 2011 2011 was yeah. close yeah. I was yeah. uh cam newton cam newton year 2011 cam newton so there was a Topps Inception football, and actually Inception football came out before Inception baseball. Interesting. Yes. Yes. And, uh, it and, literally... and, Bowman, and Bowman Inception used to be a completely different configuration than it is now for baseball. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and uh, I believe the last year they made Inception was 15, and I think literally they came out with Origins in 16. Yes. So... And, and, well, that was and, – and why, Doug? Why – was 15 the last year because tops lost their football license or did not wasn't able to renew because panini basically panini uh basically bought the exclusive rights they paid that money to say tops we don't want you to make football products like anymore. that softball you know i'm starting to get the hang of this <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah. 157, 157 shows 157 in seven episodes and i'm getting the hang of this getting game it. well <laughs> let's talk about something that i know nothing about but you know you can't dismiss the popularity, the resurgence of the Pokemon cards. Now, I know this is a sports card show. I know we mainly talk about sports, but we'd be remiss to not talk about this explosion of Pokemon and the first edition. We have Jake Paul. If you don't, you don't know who he is, he's got 16 million followers on Instagram. So he's got a lot of followers. He's a YouTube sensation. And he is on there talking about Charizard. Professional boxer, too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You're trying to fight uh, uh, your, your boy, Antonio Brown. Well, I don't know who that is. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, so, you know, you could see a recent tweet uh, of you, you Logan say, Paul. Yeah, I was like, didn't you say Jack Paul? I, I probably said his name wrong. I'm you, sorry. I think he said his brother. Jake, oh. Yeah, yeah. Logan Paul, Jake Paul. I think he said Jack, though. <laughs> no, I think he said Jake Paul. No, I think he said Jack Paul, <laughs> Chris, which, is, which, is, which is funny because it's like their second cousin. Yeah. Chris Paul is collecting <laughs> uh, Pokemon cards now. Uh, Logan Paul, uh, nostalgia plus business equals the new art. Just bought an estate's worth of Pokemon cards. Most fun investment I've ever made. Shout out to Gary V for pushing me. So, uh, oh, here we go again. Gary, Gary. V, Gary V changing the market. But, um, you know, what this relates to is that the guys in – um, you know we're we're getting close to forty, right? Me and me and Dan, C Rad's still twenty five. <laughs> Speak but, for yourself, dude. I twenty three. Um, but you know, <laughs> we we were more like you know Pogs instead of Pokemon. But I think Pokemon is the early thirties, late twenties kind of guys. It's coming back around. They're seeing people doing trading cards. They're like, well, what about Pokemon cards? 1999. 1999, I was about to graduate high school, so I, I, there's other things on my mind. But, you know, guys that were in middle school yep. and elementary school around that time, now they're old enough to be like, I can buy some of these cards, and I remember having fun doing this. So I am going to buy it and hold on to it for a lifetime. So that's what's going on. And these cards are going for insane amounts. You can see a first edition Charizard BGS9 selling for 60,000. A uh, Pokemon first edition Red Pikachu 1600. A 1999 Hollow first edition Shadowless Pokemon 3500. And this is just there's so much more of this going on. Let I mean, in the last 6 months some of these cards have doubled and tripled. Let, in price let's uh i'm gonna i'm gonna go to c rad real quick mm -hmm. i got a, i got a question mm -hmm. um so 1999 pokemon first edition i'm assuming that was a mass-produced product absolutely you can get as many as you want right yes um obviously that sixty thousand dollar charizard had to be what would they consider a rare they didn't they don't say short prints in pokemon right they yeah. like rare and commons maybe yeah it was a, it was a, it was more on the rare side yeah um also a bgs9 now when kids were getting these cards there if i'm not mistaken again there's a game that's played with it correct correct so you're probably like not top loading these cards and you're not probably sleeving these cards as much especially back in like 1999 when they when the game first came out it had to be more directed <sighs> towards the gameplay than the collection right. now i think it's you have collectors who are like, oh, I'm going to collect these and I'm going to hold on to yeah. them. 
and what a lot of kids were doing back then, um, they weren't putting necessarily in sleeves a lot, but they were they were putting them in the the binders. Okay. But you, I mean, don't you have to take them out to play the game? Yeah, or you or do. playing the game like wasn't as popular. Playing the game wasn't as popular. Actually, I, I want, I'll say this for um, what from what I've seen from because this was very popular when I was I was in middle school. So we were all collecting the cards. Some of us were playing the actual card game. Not not many. People were actually just playing the game on Game Boy, but we were just collecting the cards on the side to trade. And because we we know like you know like even back then we knew that that uh, we, for me it was it was um, coming from sports cards in the early '90s, right? For me it made sense. Like okay, this Charizard is harder to get, so that's why it's worth forty dollars. Back then it was worth forty bucks, right, for the uh, um, the foil version, first edition. So like I I understood that. So you know. I don't know how, how how other Pokemon collectors understood it because maybe that they they might not necessarily have came from the sports card side, but a lot of people were obviously that were into the game went straight to the to the trading cards, and yeah, people were not I think, playing it I as th- much. I think that's actually a pretty good uh, connection to the video game to the cards because you're basically playing the video game and you're obviously can play different characters or you see different characters, then you associate those characters with the cards and you're like, mm-hmm. oh, this player this like character in the game's like dope like i'm i'm stoked i got that one yeah um kind of similar to how we view sports cards with viewing sports mm-hmm. you basically find a player that you want a pc and you're like okay i got this player now i'm gonna watch all the games and check out his stats the only difference is that you're basically playing the game yeah. and then associating those cards with you know the, collection. the thing that intrigues me is the um, the fact that you know, even back, this is two decades ago, all right? Even back then, people were chasing the Charizard card as like a holy grail. You know, that was the most expensive card, 40 to to $100 was what it was going for back then, raw, um, back in 1999. But to me, it's like Charizard was a popular character in the show and, on the, and somewhat in the video game. He wasn't necessarily the most powerful character in the video game. So I wonder where that, that you know, like that, that lore that lore well, wasn't, came from oh, again it uh, must have been from the because i did watch the cartoon it must have been from the cartoon they they maybe played up charizard as this like you know overwhelming you know pokemon that other trainers and pokemons had to overcome wasn't so. what and again I, I i don't really know much but like wasn't one of the most popular and polarizing characters in pokemon pikachu definitely the most popular definitely the most popular the most popular by far like easily but I don't see a lot of value in there has to be Pikachu has to have cards, right? Yeah. Is there value in cuz he was probably the most he it I think I Pikachu's what, what, value what, isn't What what is Pikachu? Pikachu he's like a little uh little little rat. <laughs> rat, I think. <laughs> Cute rat. Well, there's actually um, less mouse. less mouse. less Pikachu. He's a mouse. <laughs> he's, a, he's a little he's a he's a mouse rat. <laughs> there's a le- there's less Pikachu graded. So I I just I hopped onto the pop report and you know Hopefully, I'm looking at the right thing. Um, there, there is, you know, when you're looking at Charizard and you look at first edition, and um, let me get back to where I was. There was only about a thousand Charizard first editions graded, with only I think a hundred uh, tens or maybe less. Uh, let me get back to where I was. The thing is, but that has to be recent, right? Charizard Hollow, that, that, like, Charizard there, Hollow. Was so, there, was there 120 in- PSA tens? And there's only 2,500 total in the PSA Pop report. I w- so I w- I'll say this: I've known for I've known for at least since the mid 2000s to maybe the late 2000s, the the earliest remember I can remember, people really collecting the char- the graded charts and grading them and grading them. So like this, but you is, wouldn't think this, of that. This has been going on for over a decade now. Um, that where it's actually been a collectible thing, and I and I've seen it. You know, I watched from afar. I've seen it grow, grow, grow. And Pokemon is. The, one of the biggest franchises in the world now, off the strength of the, the you know, just not the cartoons, the video games is huge. But yeah, the card, the trading card has never really slowed down amongst kids. You think that maybe its resurgence in the popularity has to do with the Pokemon Go app? Because a lot of a lot of the people who like used to maybe play the card game or play the Game Boy game or play all the games and maybe watch the cartoons. Now they're older adults, and this is how like how they get reintroduced, and maybe they can reinter- they can introduce their kids mm-hmm. to Pokemon. Mm-hmm. So 
now you start seeing cards coming out again and they're like oh i remember collecting cards so i'm gonna go ahead and do this with my kids and we're gonna go and play the pokemon go game and it's gonna be just a whole family thing I think it's the nostalgia aspect of it. Um, and I think, just like sports cards, I think the pandemic has helped because, you know, you, you can't go to a football game in most places. You can't go out to a bar. You can't go to a concert. Um, there's so many things you can't do anymore during this time that people are bored. So they're going back and they're looking at these things. And it's spreading because you see, look, look at breaks, look at cards. You got, hey, John, I just went to Target and I bought a Mosaic Blaster and they sell for $200 now. What? Football cards? Oh, or basketball? I'm going to look it up. Wow, look at this. LeBron James sold for $4 million. Wow. I, I, there's money in this. I'm going to get in this. This is fun. So, I mean, it's. I think it's lack of things to do that's helping this. And with helping social, the hobby in general. Yeah, yeah and, and, this, and the aspects. hobby being on social media compared to in 1999 yeah. when this game came out. It wasn't really as much on social media. So it's just spreading, but, spreading but fast. But let's, let's be clear here that they never stopped making Pokemon cards. No. They never. Like, so that's a that's also a thing. Like, in 99. And they, there's no they, autos the, to hold it back, so the it's first massively e- Yeah, the yeah. first edition, 1999. I've, I've had solicitations for the last 10 years if I want to buy Pokemon cards. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until the last couple months where we're like, yeah, we'll take some. I, I mean... Where is the resurgence? I, we have to pinpoint it somewhere. If, if you think it's just the pandemic and people are trying to find things to do, um, then it's not going to have legs and longevity. I as, think, so, as soon as we get back to normal, it's going to go right back into... Yeah. In, in my opinion, it's the, po- the growth of Pokemon has been a completely 100% organic, natural um, growth. In that I, I have, I've seen it grow. every Like I said, uh, even in the late t- 2000s, I've seen people collecting Charizards for thousands of dollars because they're like, this is the card that's going to keep growing in value as it becomes more, more and more through the years. Kind of like a Jordan and, or LeBron rookie, right? So, so, so Charizard is the Jordan absolutely. Of, of Pokemon. Anytime, so I, I, anytime a set has a Charizard, that um, any set that comes out now, if it has a Charizard, especially like a full art foil type of Charizard, it's always going to be the most expensive card in the set. LeBron. Yeah. Or, or Jordan. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, um, we're going to move on. and we, The PSA versus BGS <clears throat> debate is coming up, so stay tuned for that. Uh, we do have some Pokemon available on the website for personals, or if you want us to ship it sealed, we can do that as well. There is a new form of Charizard that people are chasing um, in those boxes as well. Um, but we want to talk a little soccer. Soccer is also heating up. Um, it's crazy. And Dan knows this sales rep that calls us, and he has this spiel, you know, and he's a very good at a spiel where he's like, hey, you know, we got Top Stadium Club. How many cases do you want? Blah, blah, blah. And then at the end of his spiel, he goes, soccer, WWE, Pokemon. You guys don't want any of that. All right, have a good day. Actually, he throws Yu-Gi-Oh. Yes. Yu-Gi-Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh Pokemon. Pokemon, soccer, racing. All right. Yeah, so now we're like, wait, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. We're ordering that now. We're ordering that now. But anyways, soccer is <laughs> – soccer wait, is – Wait, wait, don't hang up. Don't hang yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't do you, the uh, – you say Pokemon? Nine years in a row, you got to change it now. You got to change up this, this spiel. Um, soccer is on fire. Uh, you know, in the new select UEFA, which the UFA didn't happen this year. It's going to happen next year. But the teams were already named. There's 20 countries that are involved in the Euro Cup. And they're represented in the select soccer, which is in fuego right now. As you can see, some of the boxes um, are the, the the hybrid is going for 450. The hobby is going for around 600 bucks, um, and that is piggybacking off the strength of the World Cup 2018 Prism World Cup. Um, soccer is huge, and soccer is the number one sport in the world. So it was only a matter of time before the collecting of it came to the forefront. And yeah, as you, it felt like we were going to get that. Remember a few years ago um, with we, when they were really putting out a lot of select uh, yeah. a lot of soccer products it felt like that would that that wave was coming but it it just got delayed a few years and now uh, we're fine yeah there. i mean it always we've seen it as long as during panini as long as panini's had the the license during the world cup you see a pretty significant spike in releases mm-hmm. right and you see a spike in demand yeah um yeah, yeah. and Doug and i have talked about it over the years cuz we've gone through two world cup cycles doing group breaks and it almost almost three but two two for sure and you basically can see right after the world cup happens nobody would care and now we're not even in the we're not even it's not even a world cup year products are coming out and it literally is the 
hottest product on our site. It is the hottest product on uh, internet the internet? Re- internet retailer sites. Yeah. It is the hottest product on the secondary market. Uh, it reminds me a lot of basketball, but just like overnight. Yep. Like Zion, we were talking about Zion a six, year. six months before the draft. A year before the draft. We were talking about Zion. So we were just already talking 1920 is going to be crazy. 1920 is going to be crazy. This literally just like it was three, four releases. And now we're just like, I would say at this moment, soccer is hotter than basketball. It might have a lot to do with the fact that basketball is winding down. We're getting a new rookie class. But it's hot. It's the hottest thing in the market right now. Yeah, and you can see some prices. I mean, the the 2018 Prism Killian and Bappes are just out of this world. You can see a blue one ending in five days. It's already up to twenty five hundred dollars. His base cards are going for thousands of dollars. Just a base card of Killian and Bappe, who is in select UEFA as well. So I can only imagine. Obviously, they won't go for as much as his Prism because that's his first one, but. You know, getting any colors, any zebras, things like that uh, will do very, very well. Um, you've got tons of play. Even Messi and Ronaldo, who's had a ton of cards. I mean, granted, those guys are like the legends. Those are like the uh, the LeBron and the uh, Kevin Durant's of the league right now. The, the guys that have been around for a while that are the top of, uh, of the sport. So a lot of things going on. And I think the beauty of soccer collecting, too, is that two companies make the cards. Um, three, if you want to throw in the one that does the overseas, that uh, what's that company that's uh, Futura? Futura. 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 So they make the cards too, but you got Tops with their certain licenses, and you have Panini with their certain licenses, and they're actually kind of competing in a sense to make better products, which, which in, in turn helps the collector, right? I, so I think, and that that's the issue that I have. It is it is very hot right now, but it is very confusing from a collector that doesn't know a ton. That about, doesn't know a lot about soccer. a lot about soccer. Yeah. Like you know some of the players, but you're like. Are the players I'm chasing going to be in this set? Are they even in this league? I have no idea. Like, you're going to have to do a little bit of research. I'm trying to learn on the fly as well. Um, But it is good to see the two manufacturers having that true competition and raising the bar. And that actually might be why it's so hot right now. Because not one manufacturer can basically control the market. Absolutely. And, um, well, without further ado, we are going to get into the debate, the I decision. Think, should we have a disclaimer? I don't know. Should, I don't think we, so. Should we basically say that anything in this next skit is not affiliated with Mojo Break or is, like, you know, the, the whole P- Allegedly? Ale- Let's just word, uh, just say allegedly. I, I'm just saying, like, this is... We're just it's satire, so so just just relax. No, it was serious, and I was serious. It, I was serious. C Rad was serious. Dan may have not been serious. I, but very, because very, he had a lot to lose. Very so, very rarely, but I, I there should be like a disclaimer right now, just so we don't get in trouble. No disclaimers, not at all. And that's how not you at get, all, not at all. So let's get into this without further ado. All right, welcome collectors to the first great debate of 2020. Today we are here to see which is better for collectors, PSA or BGS. We got two gentlemen supporting each side. First, let's bring in BGS supporter, Double Down Dan. Thank you, 6.5, how you doing today? I am very well. And by the way, I forgot to mention that this is Conrad c 6.5, representing my own company, but moderating this great debate today. Next, we are bringing in PSA supporter, Doug the Plug. All right, so how it's going to work today is we are going to ask questions to each side. The, uh, they do not know the questions beforehand. I came up with this all by myself because CRAT 6.5 is obviously the better grading service. But first question, and we're going to give each side two minutes to answer. Why should collectors grade with you? BGS, let's start with you. Well, um, I'm assuming when you say you, and you know, I would like to thank CRAD 6.5 for doing the moderation tonight. I know you got big things going on. Oh, and uh, I appreciate you taking time. And uh, thank you, thank you, the plug, 
for uh, you know being here tonight. I'm gonna have to wipe the mop the floor with you today, it's not but really uh, a contest. It's not don't really worry about it. So uh, I'm out here and I'm thinking, PSA. Why would you want to do it, huh? Uh, what? Well, I mean, it's a uh, it's a flimsy. And I say flimsy product. And when I talk about flimsy, I mean just the slabs themselves. You can't, can't run them over with your car. Um, it's proven that you cannot do it. It's uh, just BGS when you hold it, feels like you got something. And uh, when I say you got something, I'm such a fan. I, I take some of my most precious belongings. I got my phone here slabbed up by BGS as you can see. Let me get a little closer in there. It's amazing, right? It's amazing. It's the greatest slab known to man. Well, you know, I'm gonna jump in and I'm gonna interject because I'm not Carrot Top. I don't have any props. My product speaks for itself. You can look on eBay. You can see what the tens are selling for compared to the BGS. So there is no doubt. I don't even know why I'm here representing PSA speaking the word for the collectors because the data proves itself. Plus, look at all the colors BGS has. They have white, they have gold, they have black. You don't know where it's going. Are they gonna introduce a rainbow? Are they gonna introduce the yellow? PSA, we have one color. So when you have it in the box, they're all uniform. And that's the beauty of it. They're all uniform in the box. And they're much more aerodynamic. It's not like you're walking around with a paperweight. So the choice is very, very, very easy, and it's PSA, hands down. Terrible, flimsy. Now, when you get a BGS slab, you're basically, you have a chance of getting a black label, which is the creme de la creme when it comes to... 0.00001%. Pfft, lies. Good luck. Good luck. Lies, you have, there's no truth behind that. Better chance I, to win I the have, Powerball. I have millions. Guys, guys, black let's, not, label. let's not talk over each other here. Answer one at a time, please. You got millions of black labels. Oh, he's just lying. He's just the reason lying. why I have, you know, when I'm driving down the highway at a buck 90 because I got so many black labels and I can afford a car that goes 190 and I get pulled over and I bring out my, like I said, some of my most precious belongings, including my driver's license, BGS slabbed. And I hand it to the cop and he just lets me go. He lets me go because he knows. He knows, he knows how I am. He knows, he knows I'm a man who knows slabs, knows grading, um, subgrades. How about we talk about subgrades? You know, say you, uh, you send in a card, you get a 9.5 and you're like, man, what? Why didn't I get a 10? Why didn't I get a gem mint? Your surface is all messed up. And now I know, now I know. We don't have time or attention to pay attention to subgrades. We're just out there improving people's collections one card at a time weak one card at a time your slabs and are weak they're not weak they they're are weak. Water all right all they right gentlemen waterproof. two minutes up for both sides let's get on to the next question actually um so we're gonna start here with psa doug the plug Please, what makes your grading service a better long-term investment? Well, you can just collectors. look at the history of the company. We've been around a lot <laughs> longer than these guys have. You know, I don't know. They may be gone tomorrow. I don't know. Maybe their service, maybe the, the, uh, it's going to take you two years to get your cards. I don't know. Uh, that, may, that may make them go away. Allegedly, I heard they're backed up for 15 years. I don't know. I don't know. That doesn't happen at PSA. And if you look at it, we have not change through the years it's almost like they're taking their slabs and they're just they're, they're just coming up with ideas every day how can we make another wacky the great, idea the greatest ideas maybe like the uh, greatest ideas maybe, the most innovative maybe most innovative most innovative okay well it seems like you're trying to compete with the best so you keep coming up with new ideas and nothing is sticking we had the nine fives then we had the 10 pristines well how do we get people to get even more we're going to do the black label what's next what are you guys coming up with next what other label are you coming up with? Is there gonna be 11? Are you guys gonna come up with a BGS 11 next? So, so Doug the Plug, what makes your grading service a, long ter a better long-term investment? I, hey, was hey, the question. With all due respect, 6.5, I didn't get a rebuttal on that. He got like, do I get my two minutes back? I didn't get any. He's just spewing nothing out of I his didn't mouth. I didn't get any, I didn't get. He's just spewing when out coming, of his mouth. When coming to value, I didn't get to basically say my point. So can I get my two minutes? What, so, okay, PS, BGS then, double down Dan, what makes your grading service a longer 
better longer term thank investment. Thank you, thank you, C-Rad, 6.5. Yeah. <coughs> crap, crap. I actually, I feel right now I'm debating you instead of debating crap. the plug. Crap on us. So, we're talking about crap. value here, right? We're talking about value. Crap. And what I hear from the plug, he may be scissor hands because I think that's why he loves the old PSA, if you get what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. I, well, Let's stay on I, topic here, no, gentlemen. No, no, Let's no, stay no, on no, topic no. That's here. That's why he's talking about value. You can't do that with BGS. We have those subgrades. We have checks and balances. That's why I'm a fan. The checks and balances. I don't know if they have That's those. That's probably in, why it takes six years to get your and cards. I know, and I know a lot of six people. Six years. I know a lot of very, very, very famous collectors. I know them all. I know them all. I know them all. I know them all, plug. Okay. But getting back to, you don't know. You could basically- you see Logan Paul with the BGS slabs on Instagram, did you? You know, BGS, whatever, whatever. BGS might be the old man game. Whatever, scissor hands. Old man game. Whatever, scissor hands. Is that, is that your whole, uh, your game? Is that you go buy cards and you may take a little, little, off, the, little off the left, little off the right? I don't know what you're maybe talking about. Maybe off the top, little off the bottom? I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe go from, uh, go from a gem nine to maybe a, a ne- gem 10? Never heard of it. You wouldn't really know. I'm trying to save everybody here. Doesn't I happen. mean, there's nothing, and I'm talking to you, the collector. There ain't nothing worse than going through a shoebox and flipping through your flimsy slabs of PSA and seeing a nine, 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 nine. You're all, why did I get a nine and not a 10? Well, if you had some subgrades on there, maybe you would know, maybe you can be There's better. There's nothing worse than going through your box and seeing silver, white, gold, black. Well, you won't have a black in there, so it doesn't even matter because the chances are 0.008%. I, I got millions of black labels, millions. Maybe you do, but not your collectors, not anybody else. If you do it right, you can get 10. Check those for trimming. No, 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 no. That doesn't check some balances is what we, we base our uh, product on. All right, all right. Two minutes done for that. And I don't think either of you answered which one was the better long-term investment. So we're going to move right oh, on. Oh, I did. I did 6.5. <laughs> all right. GTS. Starting with PSA and Doug the Plug, where do you see your grading service in 10 years? Top of the mountain like we are now, basically. Why does he um, get to go first? Because he, I'm he, in first place. He just, he just went... He just went. Because I'm in first place. He just went first. Why don't I get to go first? Because you're second I, place, bro. We got it. Hey, there ain't nothing wrong with. Ain't nothing SGC wrong with silver. is about to be in here next time. Ain't with nothing me. wrong with silver. Who? S- yeah, yeah, exactly. Who? But they're, they're, you're in the same category chirp, as SGC. Chirp, 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 chirp. Who? SGC, baby. That's your competition, not mine. We are in that a was crickets, category by the way. of crickets. our own. Okay, a category of our own. PSA, long term. Logan Paul. Instagram. Who has Pokemon graded cards? Pokemon? PSA 10 first edition. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Is that all he has? He has Logan Paul? Is that what he... Who? Well, we don't have long enough for me to go through the list of celebrities. You just that did. We had one. PSA. You had That's one. That's just one. That's just happened today. That's just on the dome. You want to talk about long-term investments and, uh, you know, we break it back. We break it back down to print media and Beckett, the king of print media. Back there, everybody flipping through the price guides. Did I see a PSA price guide anywhere? I'm looking, I'm looking, I don't see it. I don't see it. Who reads, who reads anything Who anymore? reads? Apparently, yeah. you don't, apparently you don't read. Yeah. Cause you know shit. No, I, whoa, I know whoa. everything. I'm on Language I'm, gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, this is a kid's show here. It's a kid friendly yes. debate. Yeah, kick him out now. Obviously there's a number one Oh, here. now you're now you're mad. Now you see he's getting flustered. He's getting flustered. He can't, nothing he can't handle pressure. The choice is very he clear. He can't handle pressure. Very clear with your obnoxiously thick slab that just, you could, I mean, you might as well, you know what, one, thicker, good, thicker one, is better. one good selling point for BGS is you could keep one and you could throw it and use it as a weapon because it's so heavy that it'll probably knock somebody out. So you might be able to use it. I know you got your phone thing there and, and you could also no, use, I, it to, uh, that's, use it as a weapon because it's no, so large. That's why is that a downfall? I, why, I, why, why does it need to be so if big? You have it, don't you want to be protected if you have a home intruder? You can a just 600 go, count you can go out. You can go out getting your BGS slabs and just throw them like ninja stars. No, a, a, a 600 count box, you can fit two BGS slabs in there because that's how thick they are. It's ridiculous. So, gentlemen, do we have any any? We are running. We are running out of time. With uh, I don't think we got any question actually answered here. We are actually running out of time. Do you have any closing statements for your side? Just we're number one. 
PSA obviously is the choice amongst collectors. We have the best slabs. We have the best ROI in the business. We have the most celebrities choosing our slabs to use. So the choice is very, very clear. And I don't even listen to what this, this whatever his name is, Double Dirt Dan has to say, because what's coming out of his mouth is absolute diarrhea. All right. Some of the, I, I'm a part of some of the greatest collector groups, and uh, we all truly know BGS is the way to go. Um, the long-term investment, you're never going to be disappointed. You're holding something, some substance. Uh, the perfect, like, just look of the curved edge, like, not even the curved edges, just like everything about it. It's amazing. Did I get back to the subgrades and the autograph grades on the back? Um, it just, there's nothing better than having a display case filled with BGS. There's nothing more profitable and there's nothing more fulfilling as a collector. You. All right. Well, I'd like to thank both Double Down Dan and Doug the Plug for joining the debate. It is clear as ever that we did not answer a single question that we sought out to answer. So um, just uh, we want to thank everybody for taking their time to watch the debate tonight. And we hope you all learned a little bit of something of PSA and BGS and, and where they view their long-term uh, success going. But most of all, keep in mind, CRAT 6.5 is on the way, baby. We're back. And obviously, PSA won that one. Um, we'll let you guys decide. Comment on the video. What is your choice? We're going to give away $150 in break credit if you comment on the Mojo Break media video of this episode, not here on Mojo Breaks YouTube, but on the Mojo Break Media channel. Um, comment on this video which one you would prefer to grade your cards. Uh, don't take what we say. Obviously, that was satire, but BGS versus PSA. We want to know. We want to know. You know, I actually think we've had that debate like 20 different times on this show. <laughs> um, never actually like that. But I, again, that was. Uh, that was completely unscripted. I know it, I don't have to tell you guys that. <laughs> what do you mean? Um, I've been practicing for years. I don't have to tell you it was un, uh, unscripted. It actually, uh, we came up with it this morning. Last night, well, was well, the inception the, the, of it. This morning, th last night you brought it up, and I was like, we're probably not going to do it. And then uh, we, when you actually asked if I brought my sports coat, I was like, I guess we're doing it. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, I I like having some content that's not just the same, even if it's terrible. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> it's different. So, you know, and honestly, I used to be a BGS lover. I do prefer PSA at the moment, uh, but that may change. But at the moment, I do like the look of PSA. But uh, maybe we'll save that for a recap of next week. I think C-Rad did fantastic hosting and doing his best uh, and, Wallace impression. And, yeah, and I found out about it 10 minutes before we recorded it. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, wasn't, it wasn't like we told C-Rad like, <laughs> last night. He wasn't a part of the group text. It was actually just me and Doug. C-Rad probably should have been on there. No, I think you were. I think you said you but guys yeah, I don't think to... you probably didn't think we were serious. No, so. I didn't. Me either. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I, I'd like to do more satire stuff like this. Um, it, you know, I mean, it, some of it's going to be okay, some of it's going to be terrible, uh, and some of it's going to be somewhere in between. So, absolutely, exactly. Um, that was probably a uh, what we call a tweener. It was there's some good parts, but probably some pretty uh, terrible parts. Hey, I you don't you don't analyze your own art, right? So, no, I I actually I refuse to watch it. So uh, I know that it was going down, but you did great, Dan. No, I mean, I wish I would have. The beginning part. You stumbled was, in the beginning. The beginning part was Doug tough. Doug got you in the beginning, but you, you pulled it. Beginning, you reined beginning it in. part was tough. Um, Should have gone. <laughs> Should have gone without questions. I told it. We could have just like literally. Well, maybe we'll have a round two where SGC comes in. Um, but that's all we got for today's show because we got breaks that are sold out coming up. So don't go nowhere. We're going to jump back on the feed here and do some Donruss. And we've got more Mosaic. We've got Contenders Optic. we got Opulence breaking. See where I just pulled a, uh, uh, a Zion Z Opul Z Opulence, man. Z crazy, crazy card. Um, so, But we'll see you guys uh, next week on <clears throat> The Hype. Peace out.